So hello everyone and welcome back down to Lotman. So this is going to be day three of the polytunnel build. The plan today is to try and look at getting the cover on potentially, but if nothing else, preparing it for the cover. So what I want is to have a nice solid um, structure and the ability to stop that blowing away in any heavy wind. Because as you probably see from the sky, we're starting to head into sort of bad weather season. What I don't want is to spend this money and time putting this up for it to blow away in the wind. So we'll have a little look at my plans and uh, we'll get on with it. So this is one of the methods that I'm going to use to hopefully stop the polytunnel from blowing away. As you see these, I've got some ground anchors. Um, I've got six of these, which is quite handy as there's six upright poles. And I've got four uh, five metre long ratchet straps, uh, sorry, 15 foot ratchet straps, which are about uh, five metres. Plan being, one of these in each corner, well, one of these towards the bottom of each upright, and then one of those going over the top. So hopefully, if we get wind coming up underneath the uh, polytunnel, these will hold it down and stop it blowing away. So I'm going to look at getting those in the ground, make sure that they're going to reach across uh, from one anchor to the other, uh, and then look at the internal frames that I've got. So looking at the straps already, um, I've already come across one issue. Um, they're slightly too short for what I need. So what I'm gonna have to do is link up two of the ratchet straps. Uh, one to go down to each of the anchors in the ground. Um, so I have tightening bits at either side, which is fine. It just means I won't be able to have one across the middle. I'll be able to have one at each end uh, for now, and then potentially purchase some more of those straps in the future. But for now I'll have um, one down in each corner uh, one hook down in each corner with the um, ratchet strap going all the way across the top. Now one other thing I have noticed that I forgot to do is bring down my spanner or spanner set even because I forgot to tighten this up last time I was here so I'm gonna have to go and grab those and uh, come back shortly. So I've quickly popped home, grabbed some spanners and I've tightened all the the joins up on here now so they're solid which does mean that I think I'm about ready to put the cover on. Right so here we go we've got the outer cover on roughly at the moment I've just put these straps across just to see how they would sit on there and it looks like they're not going to sit just on the bar without any uh, any clips or anything so at the moment it's just sitting over the covering um, but it's supported by all the bars around I've just put these over just because as you can see the weather's not particularly nice at the moment um, and I want to get them down before it starts raining so that I can then get in and start uh, pinning all the bits where they need to be. I'm probably going to stick a couple of uprights uh, either side of the door just to give it a kind of solid base to zip up against. Um, definitely do it at this end, may do it at the other end, I'm not sure about that at the moment but I just need to get around pulling all the bits down making sure it's all nice and nice and square well I say square rectangular but the cover's all in the right place and it's pinned down properly so I'm going to get on with that and uh, we'll come back in a bit so as you can probably see I managed to get this uh, on just in the nick of time I was considering doing the wooden parts for the doorway before I did the inside and I'm very glad that I didn't because I'd be getting very wet now otherwise so it's probably about half an hour later and it's still absolutely tipping it down with rain. Uh, it doesn't mean I've not been doing anything. So I've managed to put this weed membrane down on the floor in here. Uh, which actually means I can walk around without getting big clumps of mud on my feet at the moment. The only issue being with a frame is must not be completely plumb. It's not exactly two metres wide at points, which means there's a slight overlap. So what I might do is either cut a little extra of that weed membrane up and put it down which i think i will do or i could just leave it but i think actually i want this to last i don't want there to be any weeds in here i think i will just put a little extra strip along at the bottom so there we go as you can see i cut some snippets off the roll not very straight snippets admittedly um, but it's quite difficult to cut that weed membrane with the scissors and what I have also done is melted around the edge just to reduce the risk of it fraying. There's a couple of bits I didn't manage to because my lighter ran out of gas. But uh, the majority of it has been 
melt it around the edge to smooth it off. I've done that corner there as well. So as you can probably hear, the rain is now eased off a little bit. So I'm gonna start grabbing some wood chip to bring down and put on the floor. So as you can see, blue skies have kind of approached. We can actually see the sun up there now as well and it stopped raining. So I've carried on a little bit uh, with the rain. I obviously put all that weed membrane down. I've done a few trips down to the bottom of the plots and grabbed a load of this wood chip. Now this wood chip is going to come all the way out here to this little step down. Um, I'm probably going to do like a wooden edge to this step down. But we'll make weed membrane and wood chip that anyway. You might be able to see. I've also <laughs> managed to get a tiny little table and chairs today in uh, Wilkinson's or Wilco's, whatever they're called, uh, in their closing down sale. So it's cost me less than 30 quid, and it means I've now got a little table so I can sit and have a cup of tea or just relax. And equally, I can take it outside if it's nice weather. And I do have a nice big green area down there that I can put it out on. So the next plan is to do the door bracing on this end. And I probably will do some door bracing on this end, but what I might also do is um, rather than use this door often, as I probably have a water, water butt behind that and use that door mainly as a vent. So I might well put like a little surface across there that I can put any plant feeds and things like that. But we'll work that one out as we go anyway. So I'm gonna have a look at potentially starting these today, depending on how I feel. Um, if nothing else, I might start digging some holes for them to go in. Um, but we'll see. Right, so I have unfortunately come to the end of what I can do for today. Uh, I've dug the holes ready for the, uh, the post that's going to go up the side of the door. Um, I've also cut some bars that are going to go from here to these uh, just to strengthen them out. And I'll probably do one lower down as well, potentially. Um, and then what I will also probably do is do a bar across the top here just to strengthen them out as well make it a nice rigid um, doorway. What I have done is I have cut this wood and treated it with clear coat as well just to keep it nice and waterproof it matches in with the other wood that's inside. So that's it for me for today I did want to do a little bit more but I haven't got any batteries for my power tools up here with me um, and it's going to be getting dark very soon so by the time I go home to get them and come back likelihood is I'd have to stop anyway. So I'll call that an end to day three of the polytunnel. Um, but do you know what? I think we've got really far. We actually have a polytunnel built with cover, secured with weed membrane and wood chip on the inside. So I think for three days work, we've done pretty well, considering that a lot of that was digging the, the ground work out for the polytunnel. So as I say, that's it for me for today. I will be back with day four shortly. Um, but until then, thank you for watching. Happy Lockman's in.